Live from New York City, it's Candid with Terry and Keith. Today's guest is actor Malik Yoba. Here's Terry Patterson and Keith Perrin. He's fine, chocolate, <gasps> Ooh, and a great actor. My frat brother from another mother. Malik Yoba is here with us, so stay tuned. Don't turn that down. Welcome everyone, I'm Terry. And I'm Keith. And we have a great show lined up for you today, so make sure you stay put. I am feeling good, you know why? Why? The weather is changing, I know, I know. You've been, you're about to like like put a little cloud over my it, sunshine. You know, you know it, is, it is changing. We had a couple of eighties, yeah, almost eighty de um eighty degree days, right? But today was like forty something degrees. Are you yes, so 80? exaggerating. It's not forty degrees. It was 40, 40 what? Forty eight degrees when I woke up this morning. Okay, yeah, I didn't... might have went up to about fifty five degrees. <laughs> no, but... it was sunny for a little bit. Then, I, I, look, I mean, it's not that I'm bad, just but not I counting. pull out the heavy coat, like, I know. you know, having a light jacket this morning, I came out, walked the dogs, and you went on the block, I was freezing, and I was like, nah, let me throw this little something a little heavier, because I know it's only going to get worse later on. And I did just the opposite. I yeah, have a cape, and it's very thin, <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm anticipating some more warm weather, because we've had some really good days, and that's what I think I'm kind of like, yes, it's great in New York, but... It's going to get better. I just wanted to break. I want t-shirt weather. I'm telling you. I'm with you in shorts. I'm ready. That works. That works. That's right. I'm getting my workout on. So I think I'm ready. Uh, all right, Sensei. <laughs> all right. You go ahead now. Man, look. What's going on with these sports? One good thing. The Nets have made it to the playoffs. I knew, I knew I'm excited. I knew you were going to say that. See, my Knicks, my Knicks... You know, poor Knicks. That's what I'm talking about. We'll be better next year. We'll be better next year. We'll be ready for y'all next they year. They have a long way to go, though. They well, really you know, do. They, they just have to make the right decisions. I think, uh, you know, Carmelo was one of the biggest acquisitions that we've made in, in a while. the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. So if they can get another quality or another two quality players, like, in his range, right. I think we'd be all right. Then we got some draft choices. You know, we were like... Really bottom good. at the bottom of the uh, standing. So Definitely. hopefully we get a good a couple of good uh you know kids out of college and we'll see. Because I haven't seen them do their thing honestly since ninety four. That's like no, you know, you socks. Know, you know what I'm saying? When that was a great, great yeah time. yeah that was that was cool. But my man Latrell Sprewell. Oh, great player. You know, I, I was on. Great I player. was sitting in the Spike D seats mm -hmm, back then, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember him coming down. Give me a high five on why he made a shot at that uh that game and I, like I said the, the Knicks have not been that quality team since then. They so sure haven't. I just want to see us get back to that. You guys are doing pretty good, you know. Yes, like Brooklyn, you know, Brooklyn, you know. You know what I'm saying? They 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 are uh they work hard. And so they are. I believe I'm going to be very optimistic that they're going to make it even further this year than they did last year. Because that you know they did it again last you, you're year. You talking in the playoffs? Or Absolutely. The yeah. next season. Yeah. The playoffs and they're the playing, next season. They're playing the number the one seed. Yeah. The number one seed. Yeah. I know. Okay. All right. That's it. You got some money? I do. You want to bet on? You want to bet on my team? <laughs> I've been. A, I've been money down with them the since wood. Jersey. What? Make the game go good. Okay. <laughs> you know, so. I, we'll see. We'll see. I think that, um, I think it's it's going to be a good time for them. But but in other things, I'm going to have a great weekend. The family and I are going to visit some family. Okay. So I'm going to go upstate New York, have a good time, chill out, and um, eat some good food. Like, I know you like to what? Coke. Take what? A coat. Oh, I'm going to definitely take a coat. Oh, my yeah, God. I, I, I ain't going to lie. Coat. I'm going to take a scarf, too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm serious. I'm serious. You know, it's a little this state. One, yeah. So, yeah. I know. It's a, I different, know. it's a different time zone. Oh, yeah. yeah I lived up there, too. Yeah. So, I know it's but it's going to be good. But you're going to stop it. So, you're going south, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm going south this week. Good we're for going to Golf Classic uh, down in Augusta. Football Golf Classic. So Sweet. We'll go down there and enjoy the weather. And then come back to this weather up here. Yeah. 
Yeah, see how it goes. And when you come back, maybe it'll be better. All right. So now <laughs> we got to take a break. Yes. When we come back, we'll be right back with uh, Malik, Malik Yoba. Yoba and Keeping the Candy. Breaking the Ice. Breaking the Ice? We're oh, going to be breaking, okay. breaking the, the Ice. Breaking the Ice. Yeah. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone. Today's guest most recently appeared in the new hit series, Empire, as Vernon Turner, Lucius Lyons' best friend, confidant. He is here today with us, Malik Yoba. Give it up for him. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, before we get into this interview, we get straight into breaking the ice. Okay. Know? I can set things up. So you're going to choose a number between one and three. And one and three? One and three. It's tough. Think about this. <laughs> Keep going. It comes with a topic and then a question from both Keith and I. All right. You know, I'm going to tell you how I feel right now. Okay. Well, that's what the, we want you to do. I'm going to pick the number that expresses how I feel. I feel like number one right now. You, you know you're wrong. And the number is? One. Mm, okay. That's okay. Yeah. So. Well, you did say a number between one and three. I so I guess I should pick two. Because that's between one <laughs> and three. Right? I cannot. All right. Well, thank you. So. Ready? Yes, we're ready. Okay. One question. First question is, what's your favorite car and how does it compare to your ideal living? Wow, that's a good question. Wow, in all the interviews I've ever done, no one has asked that. I had to dig into my R. Kelly reference. Mm. <laughs> it's my <laughs> favorite car and how does it compare to my ideal woman? Wow. That's a good question. Um, well, I drive a, um, a smart car. No, I don't. I drive... <laughs> I drive. <laughs> Well, I would drive a smart car compared to a woman. I drive a BMW, but I, German engineering. Um, so, uh, wow, elegant. Um, uh, uh, Long-lasting, durable, classy. Um, can go to zero, zero to 60. 120 real, real quick. <laughs> real quick. Um, uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, solid, sturdy, family-oriented. Okay, that's a good woman. Yeah. Okay. That's a good question. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, it's okay. So if you could have it your way, the world would be what? Man, if I could have it my way. Um, the world would be a place where people have really figured out how to take care of each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, some things just don't make sense, but... Um, I like storytelling, so, um, certain reality television, I guess I could appreciate, like, um, you know, I would consider Anthony Bourdain's show, Parts Unknown, as reality okay. TV, because mm -hmm. it's not really news, mm -hmm. it's entertaining, right. it's, that's, re it doesn't get realer than that. Right, that's true. The food, the culture, the political, uh, so the landscape and where he goes, um, but I like reality, I just pitched some reality TV shows, so, uh, from a producer standpoint, um, I don't mind them at all. Okay. They can make money. Um, sitcoms, drama, okay. um, all of that. You answered the other part of the question, so you're watching the show that you're watching right now, so that's cool. Yeah. My problem with that is when they all have the same, or in the same vein, mm -hmm. and they just tell, you know, degrading, you know, fighting. You Unf know. Yeah, unfortunately, that's. that's I, I'm, I'm make more into like the T.I. You know, yeah, tiny, tiny, you know, right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. right. It's a little bit more, it's yeah. a little more to it. Yeah, more, you know. Yeah. My wife, I swear, I'm like, eh. <laughs> right. I'm in the next room, right. sports on. Right. I can't do it. I can't mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. Yeah, it can become too much. I actually got too involved and said, eh, let me back up a little bit. Too involved with what? With Real Housewives or something? With some ratchetness. You, you yeah. started auditioning for the show? No, like, I, I want to be part of this. <laughs> be a good fit. I actually was told that our Blood, Sweat, and Hills would be good for me. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. Alright, okay. let's get into the next one. What is your, What has been your most challenging for you as a black male in the entertainment industry? Um, I don't really look at myself as a black male in the entertainment industry. I don't look at myself as a black male in general. And I mean that to the extent that, you know, um, that's not how I was raised to, well, it's two things. My father always said, black man got to hustle, right? That was his whole thing. So right. from like eight years old, 
I had a paper route in Harlem. Right. So I've been hustling and used to say things like, build your own generator. So when they turn off the power, you still have lights. That's right. So from that standpoint, I was made aware of as, as a kid um, of my blackness. You know, my last name, Yoba, which he made up, means last of the slaves, a new generation. So I think that to a certain degree, we were also encouraged to be free from um, self-identifying like that as opposed to just being identifying yes self-identify as a contributor to society somebody yeah. who's determined to make their way so like people ask those kind of questions all the time like how do you feel um you know being a black man in Hollywood do you think it's harder do you think that, if I thought about those things I wouldn't do yeah, it whatever. I'm like, right. so I just think about um, the opportunity that either I'm going to create or the one that's presented to me. Right. right. More than anything. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, we have to take a break, but when we return, we're going to find out if Malik leaves chivalry is dead and what his thoughts are on the direction of the police departments across the world. So we'll be right back. We're back and still here with Malik Yoba. Later on in the show, our guest will be testing on his skill on keeping it candid. So, how is it being an actor and, and, and having a love life? What are the pros and cons of that? Man, don't go there, mm -hmm. girl. People are watching. Yeah, People are watching. I gotta know. be candid and truthful. <laughs> um, it's tough, you know. I mean, uh, well, I mean, it's different for each person. So, uh, for me, it certainly hasn't been what I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. So when I started in my career, um, I had these um, simple fantasies, like you know, you get married and you know, you, know, you work, you meet a woman, get married. Yeah, I was in my twenties. Right, right. So in my twenties, um, I didn't know it, but I wasn't really prepared to be a husband. Mm -hmm. Even though I tried, right. you know, tried in my thirties. So um, it's just it's not it's it's been tough. It's been a lot of things, but I think even if I wasn't an actor, it'd probably still be tough. I think it's the proof is in the pudding for most people. Just being a man. Just being well, not just being yeah. a man, but I just think you know, at forty seven, I mean, what I think goes into having a successful relationship with yourself, right. first of all, right, right. let alone another person, is very different than when I thought when I was twenty mm -hmm. or in my twenties. You right. know, and I think. Um, I just think there's so much that goes into it. Yeah, um, definitely. Spiritually, emotionally, mentally. Mm -hmm. um, so, and traveling all over the world and doesn't working do. yeah. doesn't really help. Yeah. It doesn't help. I mean, it was fun when you're young. You right. explore a lot of different stuff, right. but then you get a little older. It's, it's a little tough. Right. But um, some people, I was watching Kevin Costner this morning on an interview, mm -hmm. and he's got seven kids. Yeah. And I was like, damn, why do you do that? Like, and he, you know, I don't know if it's, I haven't done the math. I don't know if he has. More than one wife. But, yeah, I'm not yeah. sure either. But, um, yeah, I mean. It's a lot. He definitely knocked him down. Bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he taking time off himself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so you've been married. Yes. In your opinion, what is the key to keeping that spark in the bedroom? Uh, a lighter. Yeah. Light it by the bed and just don't make sure there's no gas and just get the spark. And so be like, we got spark in the bedroom, baby. <laughs> Um, never be disappointed. Nah, you know, nah, but that brings up something. I remember, like, asking people when I was married, like, because, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, I, all I know is my life, right? Right. And so I can ask other people what their experiences are, but on an individual basis, you know, I'm very conscious of what I think about on a moment-to-moment, -moment, day to day basis as it relates to relationships. I remember being married and, you know, I had this big house in L.A. and I got three kids and, you know, there's a lot on my shoulders. I remember it was tax season. I had like a huge tax bill. And I remember asking um, a friend that had been married for a long time, do like, how does paying taxes make its way into the bedroom? Because if you're stressed, oh. like, there's no time for being a romantic, yeah. you know? And I just think marriage in general isn't what people think it is. Mm -hmm. Like, when you, if you haven't done it, I think that, um, especially at that time in my life, um, I, I certainly don't know, didn't know what I know now. Right. right. Um, yes. And so, once I got divorced, I read every book on uh, relationships. So you can get it right for the next time? Yeah, yeah. One of the greatest books I've ever read is called A Meaning of Marriage. Okay. Um, Check that and, out. And, yeah, 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 definitely. Because so, I think that 
you know, people base marriages on all kinds of stuff. Oh, opportunity, this person mm -hmm. looks good, sex is good, yeah, right. convenience, they're trying to, you know. Things that they can... But that book is actually of. based on biblical principles that I was not aware of because I didn't grow up Christian. Right, you know? right, so, right. Um, but once I started reading that, I started really appreciating um, what the Bible says about marriage. Right, and right, it's not right. what most of us think. Absolutely. Yeah. But well, that goes into my next question then. So are you in the bedroom one who just likes to get to it? Or do you believe in romanticism? You, are you still romantic? Um, yeah, I think I am. I think I'm, yeah, I, I, yeah. It depends. Okay. You know, sometimes you just like, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, <laughs> but ro romantic is relative, right? Yeah, sometimes yeah. it's romantic throwing you against the wall. It's oh, like, come yeah. here, countries, uh, women aren't given the freedoms that um, we have here in the United States, such as reading and, and, and access to education. Like, what do you think um, should be, or we can do here to help encourage that idea, ideology in other countries? What can we do to influence other people's decisions? Mm -hmm. um, well, I think a lot of that, um, I don't know, I guess... Um, there's a lot of advocates for, you know, equality, gender equality, right. uh, that do global work. Um, so I think that kind of thing. Yeah, um, someone doing something in the lines of... Yeah, like, you know, the whole, yeah, whether it's microfinance, right? Like, the whole idea of providing financial, uh, a model for financial mobility for women. I didn't write these questions. The disclaimer. Disclaimer. Uh -oh. I will ask you this question. <laughs> Different encounters sometimes occur in the, in the heat of the moment. Have you ever had an intimate injury? <laughs> Things happen. Um, no. Nah. <laughs> Some over there, someone's over there shaking their head like. Mm -hmm. Nah, nah, but it, it's funny now because I wrote a, I wrote a piece. It was it was a play that I actually never produced, but um, I, I did write about a dude who <laughs> catches a real bad one. In a, in a sexual now, act. I, I, really? I mean, I, I have an incident with my best friend. I had an accident. Right, and what was it? And he told me he broke it. And I didn't <coughs> understand, understand that. what the yeah, he told me. Yeah, I didn't even see my face. And, like, he, what? and he showed me, and I was just like, come on, bro, I don't want to see that. And it was broke. And it was, hey, oh. it was broke. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't right. Right. And, and I don't have those problems. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. intimate injuries. Some people have reported that they had uh, a headache. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's well, you know, it's, it, 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 you talk about that. Nah, that just movie. last night, a friend of mine was telling me about a friend of hers who takes Cialis, mm -hmm. and he ended up getting like a splitting headache. Oh, so, which is, I mean, there's all kinds of comedy that can yeah. come from. Not yes, tonight, of course. I got a headache. Yes, I mean, of his blood went to the wrong head and all that. <laughs> but I thought that was kind of, so that would be a considered injury, right? Yeah, that yeah. is. I haven't fallen off a of bed or Mirror fell on my head. Right, you know what I'm saying? Awesome. Those things happen. Awesome. There's been minor injuries. Like, no, don't lean back too far. Because there's that, that moment. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, no luck. Take, you want to take a commercial right Yeah, now? I'm going to take a break. We'll stop right there. But when we come back, um, we're going to get with some more Malik Yoba. Stay right there. We're still here with actor Malik Yoba. And right now, we're going into Keeping It Candid. You know what that is. Yeah, keep it candid. This is when we're going to give you a list of two different options. Well, uh, two different options, and you tell us which best fits you. All right. All right. Let's do it. Okay. I'm easily persuaded, or I persuade easily. Um, I think I persuade easily. Oh, wow. Oh, ladies, be careful. <laughs> it can be great for business for you, though. Mm. <laughs> Although I've been easily persuaded, too, mm. but... That's another story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like the bed warm or I like the bed cool. Warm. Yeah. yeah. I like the bed cool. Would you like the heat warm it up? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Warm it up. <laughs> All right. I prefer seafood and poultry or I prefer a, ve a vegan meal. Um, I, I think I want to be vegan sometimes, but I, I definitely. Yeah, we try. Yeah, definitely um, eat seafood and poultry. What do you mean when you say seafood and poultry? Just kidding. Yeah. 
Mm. We can go places. We with sure that. can. I, I just got that. <laughs> I admit when I'm wrong, or I find it difficult to acknowledge my wrongs. No, I'm. I'm. I have no problem saying I'm wrong. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. I keep a handful of friends, or I have many friends. Um, I have many, many friends, mm -hmm. which can be a handful. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am a pleaser, or I must be pleased first. Um, definitely, I'm a pleaser. Um, yeah, I'm a pleaser for sure. Good. Yeah. Okay. Well, we just kept it candid with us guys. We like that. Okay. So now, technology is like has taken over, and so cell phones, iPads, every form of videoing and camera, you know, camera access. What do you think? Um, how do you think that's going to impact what the police are doing right now? all the hoopla of police brutality. Well, I mean, obviously Walter Scott was found, mm -hmm. um, was the, his murder was obviously documented on the cell phone. Right. Um, Eric Gardner. Well, you know, and Eric Gardner's case didn't really mm -hmm. help out in no. terms of social justice, but um, the body cams hopefully will um, help right. as well, but, you know, at the end of the day, you can't legislate morality. So, all the cameras in the world are going to make people act no. with love no. towards another person. And we so, see that. But I think it's it's help. I mean, I'm, I think we're all grateful for what happened with the with the uh, Walter Scott situation. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I definitely. seen the incident the other day where a guy thought he was pulled out his taser mm -hmm. and pulled out his gun and shot the guy. He was already yeah, in the that ground. Yeah, that's ridiculous. And then he like, says, I'm after sorry. the Walter Scott situation? Yeah. Yeah. After. Then another guy I saw the other day, like, days ago, I guess he was running around the neighborhood shooting or whatever, and of course, you know, the police took action, but this one car, the cop, rather. Oh, ran with the car? Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. But there's some people I'd rather hit with a car, too, man. Because <laughs> yeah, I've seen right. dudes just bust off for no reason. Oh, no, yeah, I'm Like, sure. walking down the street, sure. and like, yeah, that's just like, really? Like, like are you serious right now? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes it's deserving, but you got six cop cars out there. Somebody, yeah, you can go to the much. range all the time. Right. Shoot that guy. Yeah. You know, in a case nah, like I'm that. A, well, the, the, case, the one he ran over? Yeah. He can shoot that guy, man. I, I'm, I'm kind of for running him over. Because, <laughs> <laughs> hey. you know, I mean, you know, you don't know what what was in that cop's mind. I yeah. mean, you know, you use what you have, right? So, I mean, I, I don't know. I see all the details, but. Yeah. Um, have you personally ever had an encounter with the police and had to fear for your life? Um. I've definitely been beat up by cops yeah, and, yeah. and arrested and, mm -hmm. and for no reason. Um, but I've also gotten off in probably more situations um, than I should have mm -hmm. um, yeah. for different reasons. Um, so it's been, you know, it's been a, a mixed bag. Okay. I think yeah. when I was younger, I, it, the more situations, you know, I had to deal with more situations. As a child, yeah. As I got older, my status kind of changed. And you learned how to cops. avoid them. Yeah. I mean, I use my status quick. Yeah, <laughs> but here's the thing. Anytime a cop comes up behind me yeah. flashing the lights, I'm nervous. Of course. Like, I don't care. In fact, even I. it happened today. Yeah. I was in a cab earlier today, and I hear the sirens behind, but I'm in a cab. Right. So, so you're thinking about it. it. It's, <laughs> but it's deep. Right. Like, because I was like, oh, I'm not driving. I'm good. Mm -hmm. But for a second, I was like, ah. Oh, Oh, no, nah, I'm not driving. Right. I was in yeah. the backseat of the cab. Right. But yeah, it's, it's it funny you, how that it works. You're on, on cold, so it's yeah, yeah, it's crazy because I never thought about that before. Yeah. A friend of mine gave me, a cop friend of mine gave me a badge. You know, and he's the like, PBA one? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. It's no, not a gold thing. Oh, the little one? He's my brother, basically. So he gave me a little gold. So I keep my registration in there. He said, License, registration. Mm -hmm. I pull out my license. Meet you there, grab that. Here you go. I leave it on my lap. Yeah. I go, you know. I don't talk about it. I don't right. hey, put it in his face or mm -hmm. nothing. And nine times out of ten, they say, oh, who is it? He's on the job, whatever. You know, so just the other day, I got, well, my wife got pulled over. She reached in the back, reached in the um, web compartment, pulled it out. He was like, call him. Can you call yeah. him? Yeah, some of them are sure. different. They call all him. Want. Got on the phone with him. There we go. Right, so right. So I can, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes right, it doesn't. Right, right. Like I said, later on in life, right. I was, I'm much better now right. than yeah. I was right. when I was younger. Yeah. Right. We both have something in common, like um, our children name in an ah sound. Was that okay. intentional for you? 
Uh, what, like Priya? Yeah, Priya. Um, um, I like the name when I heard it. <laughs> so I was like, that's what we're going to call her. Josiah. Just, uh, just oh, oh, okay. <laughs> nah, it, was, it just worked out that it way. Just out? Dina, Priya, Dina, yeah. and Josiah. Not at all. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, mine too. I'm like, Yours? Mine were Zakia like, and Zania. It was intentional. Like, oh, I wanted it? another Z, you know, I wanted. The A sound, the off uh, sound. Oh, no, nah, you deeper than me. I, I, <laughs> That's the female in me. Right. You know? It's crazy. Do yeah. your children have the acting book like that? No, nah, not really. Mm-hmm. No. Nah. They're creative, but not necessarily doing the acting. Okay. Well, let everyone know what you're working on. So, what, what can we expect to, to hear from you, see from you? Wait, before you get into it. Yes, sir. Oh. I'm mad. Oops. I'm mad that you got killed by <laughs> like, <laughs> He too, might come man. back. You never know, man. Yeah, you know. Yeah. When TV, man. Turn, yeah, when that's it's twisted, right. turns out that, that show is. We are rooting for but that. That's a great show. It is. Yeah, it's a great show. People, yeah. people, people. It was, it was, it was needed. It was mm-hmm. a great show. Right? Yeah. At the right time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah, people caught, caught fire like crazy. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot going on, but the the biggest thing for me is um, uh, our lifestyle firm, Iconic Thirty Two. Okay. Um, so we use pop culture to promote social good. Um, we do consulting work for corporations that are trying to reach millennials, right. <coughs> helping them understand how to speak the languages of young people right. um, and kids of color um, across the globe. So that's been fun um, as an extension of what I've been doing forever. Right. So um, I've been developing some TV product, so okay. reality stuff and some dramas and some films um, that I'm producing on. and. Um, just finished filming a film called Paradox. I don't know when okay. this thing will be seen by people Maxis. besides the folks in this room. <laughs> One of the eight of them, man. eight people behind these cameras. Um, so, but just staying busy, staying busy, being entrepreneurial. And you know, to my father's point, right? Build your own generator. Yes. So when they turn off the power, you still have light. So right. for me, you know, Empire was my thirteenth television series. Right. They, you know, so there was. 11 in between New York undercover and this one mm-hmm. in a 20 year span, mm-hmm. which is pretty crazy. Right. But, um, so that's how it goes when you're just an actor. Somebody writes in the script, right? This dude that's dies, right? It's a wrap. Mm-hmm. So you have to have 12 other things going on, always, always. Yeah. always. as we know. We know this, absolutely. Well, we thank you so much for being but with us. Oh. Before you go, I don't know if you know, <laughs> you guys were the cat- catalyst to launching. Our company, a football. Oh, look at that. oh yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I knew that. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shirt on the yeah, show, and, yeah. and that was the guy saw that sh- that show and was like, "Oh, they started doing it. Call them guys back." And went back in, and that's how we got our deal. That's yeah. awesome. Actually, I didn't know that part of the story. I know that we used to wear a lot on the show. Yeah, yeah, we used to wear. But, but that that particular that one particular scene where Fredro got killed in that shirt, he was on for like thirty seconds. Like, wow. and I was just sitting there like. I was so surprised that we was on major TV like that. So I was wow. Like, wow. wow, look at that. And then the next day he called and said, "Well, you guys, you know, are you with anybody yet?" He said, "No." Nah. Called us back up there, made the deal. Same look thing. At that. See, but that's an example of what I'm talking about. How like that was popular culture mm-hmm. right. that promoted social good. Right. I mean, obviously, you guys exactly. built the right. company as right. a result of that, and you employed a lot of people. Right. You guys have gone off and done other things, and so right. I think there's a lot of power. You know, you know. People are obsessed. You know, someone was just trying to pitch a show recently in front of my. It was a, a celebrity driven show, mm-hmm. but it was just this kind of thing, right? Interviews. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, the people she was pitching it to said, nah, nah, nah. Because mm-hmm. of what people want is gossip. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people, there's obviously usually some negative connotation right. or aspect right. of gossip. Right. And so. Drama. Yeah, yeah. so right. people, you know, unfortunately. When it comes to pop culture, you usually want some of the negative mm-hmm. with it, right, you know. Right. And so it's good when you can show that the power that we have by um, sort of um, harnessing the power of what people love right. to do it in a, in a positive way. That's I think because that's the lane we stay in. What's that? We become, we become people have people really have become brainwashed, yeah. and uh, so it's unfortunate. But you know, we can help balance it out. Definitely. So. Thank, Thank you y'all. So Thank much. you for watching. Yes. Thank you for being here. Yeah. This is Candy with Terry and Keith. Yes, sir. We see you next time. All right.